So hi all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to get notified every time I drop in a video. So today uh, it's all about referencing. So it is an APA style referencing guide uh, by Sheffield Hallam University. So right now I am at the library gateway of Sheffield Hallam University, as you can see. Do not worry, all the links would be provided in the description box below. Please do check it out and do not panic if you cannot uh, yet log in or access any library gateway of Sheffield Hallam University. Once you have uh, registered and once you have got your username and password, you will be able to access the library gateway of Sheffield Hallam University. So once you come into this link, you need to access the first one, which says, I need to reference something in APA. So once you get into this, it will take you to the APA 7 style of referencing uh, with the examples, as you can see in the second section over here. So guys, be very mindful that referencing is very important in your coursework and your assign or your assignments because even referencing and citations weighs a lot of credits for your assignments or coursework so make sure you follow the correct apa uh, 7 style of referencing or whatever style of referencing the university or the module leader would tell you to follow all right. So for us, uh, since we are from Global MBA course, they have told us to follow APA 7th style of referencing. All right. And so what you need to do is uh, there are these are four examples. All right. Two, three of them are the PDFs, which you are supposed to do an independent study on. Uh, nobody will teach you. You need to read it. The British uh, style of culture of study is something different. There, there will be lectures, there will be seminars, but it also requires an independent study. So only when you do that independent study is when you can excel in and you know gain more knowledge about any concept or topic. So here, these are the three uh, PDFs. And this video will also be followed by a virtual video uh, which is provided by Sheffield Hallam University, which will help you to understand uh, the APA 7 style of referencing, a short video for all the students. And yes, so I would just give a glimpse of it. So I'm going to the third document, your guide to APA 7 style uh, referencing sources and examples. All right, so uh, I would straight away go into maybe a book, all right. So the type of reference here is a book. So always remember, you would, uh, for your coursework or your assignments, you would, uh, you know, dig the solution or whatever concept or knowledge that you want from a variety of resources or sources. All right. So it might be, it might even be a book that you would refer to a journal article, an ebook, and newspapers, magazines, journals, um, and then web sources, web page, blogs, Twitters, uh, tweets, uh, Facebook, Instagram. It can be from any social media and even Blackboard for that matter. Okay. And referencing could be also used in your dissertations and your coursework or assignments as well. So these are the um, multi-million, you know, um, ways or sources that you can always reference from or pick your knowledge from or concept from. So uh, the type of source that I am going to just talk about for a minute is on the type of source that is print book. So here the APA uh, format says authors, full stop, then the year of publication in brackets, full stop, and then the title in italics, full stop followed by the edition, okay? And then um, you can also put the publisher's name. So here, for an example, it says Deval, K, full stop. So Deval is his last name and K is his um, first name or the initials. And then followed by the year 2017. 
and followed by the title of the book, which says, my name is Leon. And then uh, followed by the publisher, which is the Penguin Books dot. All right. And the exam uh, example citations would be DVAL, comma 2017 in brackets, all of them in brackets, or excluding it from DVAL, then, you know, just brackets 2017 as well. So these are the sample citations that you can use. So make sure you remember that citations will come always in your body of your assignment or coursework or dissertation, whereas the reference, the reference that you can see here would come at the end, that would be before your appendices, after your conclusion would be your references, okay? And uh, also if there are uh, a lot of um, authors in one book, say in this, for example, there are three authors for one book. So you can cite it as et al. So Kane et al dot comma 2018. So Kane would be the first author of this book or whatever you can see on the reference, that is the name you would take for uh, the citation, okay? And also I would like to show how you guys can, uh, you know, copy the referencing style from Library Gateway. Say for example, you have a book that you want to citate from. So for example, exploring strategy text. Okay, so once you find this book in the library gateway, what you can do is scroll down to the end of that textbook details and you would have reference. So just click on reference, APA 7 style. Uh, you can select the type of style that your um, module leader or the course would demand for. And for me, it was APA 7 style, so I would click this. And it will generate your reference for this particular book. So I would copy it and I would maybe use wherever I would need it to. So for example, I would paste it here. So this is my referencing and there are a lot of uh, authors in this. So how would I cite many authors of this book is what I'll do. I'll just increase the font so that you guys can see it. So now I would just pick up the first author. And I would cite it as et al dot comma. And I could, I could pick the year of that textbook as 2020. And say, suppose you want to uh, reference it as this. You can also do. So these are the two types of uh, citations that you can use for one reference. Because if there are two or more authors, it is better to cite it as et al so that you can save your word count limit because every um, assignments will have a word count limit as per your course demands, all right? So thanks for listening. And there will be a short video that you guys would also be watching uh, till the end and make sure you stay tuned and you would understand this whole process. Thank you. A short presentation to let you know some of the changes as the university moves to APA 7 from APA 6 referencing. They are minor changes so please don't worry and there will be plenty of support but this should take you through the main things you need to know. APA 7 is a referencing style recommended for most courses at Sheffield Hallam and this style is widely used in the UK and across the world and you will find the majority of online reference generators and providers have already made the move to APA 7. Please follow the guidance you are given in your module documents by your tutor. Remember your Hallam Library is supporting the move to APA 7. And in terms of support, please use referencing at Sheffield Hallam University Guide, available through Library Online, where you will find guides and quizzes to help you develop your referencing skills. You can also use Library Online Chat for any referencing queries. So here is a quick reminder of what a reference looks like and the different parts you need to include in your reference. Now the first thing to note is there are no real changes to your in-text citations. There's still author date and just a page number when needed. There is one thing though in terms of authors that is very helpful. With APA 7, if there are three or more authors, you only have to put the first author and et al in your citation.
I've seen the text of your assignments. So that should save you some time and hopefully a few words. Now in terms of your reference list, there are again just a few changes to be aware of. If there are 21 or more authors, include the names of the first 19 authors in your reference list, followed by three dots or ellipses and no ampersand, and then the family name of the final author. There should never be more than 20 names listed in a reference. There are some further changes to be aware of when referencing texts, books and e-books as no publisher location is needed anymore. So you don't have to decide between London, New York and all those different places. APA 7 is really pushing for DOIs, also known as Digital Object Identifiers. And there is a revised format for DOIs. DOIs are like a barcode for a product and they're very common for ebooks and digitally available journal literature. So if there is a DOI, then do include it and follow the format that you can see here. If you cannot locate a DOI, there probably isn't one available for that source. So include a full web address instead. APA 7 also recommends live links to be included in your reference list. You don't need to include a retrieve from date for many of the online sources such as ebooks, online journal articles and documents from websites. Some web pages, however, contain rapidly changing information such as stock market, statistical or demographic data. When the contents of a website is designed to change frequently over time but is not archived, make sure you include a retrieval date in the reference. The example here is from the London Stock Exchange website. Another example of a source requiring a retrieval date is a Twitter profile. Let's take a look at a few examples using APA 7. The first example here is an ebook with a DOI. So you can see here, this is the standard format and not much has changed. You've just got author, date and title in italics. You also just need to include the name of the publisher, not the place of publication, and then the DOI. This is an ebook example with no DOI, so the reference includes a full live link. This book is from one of Hallam Library's ebook platforms, ProQuest Ebook Central. The reference includes the family names and initials of the two authors, with the title in italics and the publisher, Business Expert Press, with a full live URL. Some general advice about titles capitalise only the first word of a book or article title in your reference, capitalise any proper nouns initials and acronyms in a title and separate a subtitle with a colon and a space. This is another ebook referencing example showing a title from Biblio Collection. This is an e-textbook platform and there are over 90 core texts which may be included in your reading list and can be found using library search. This example includes the two authors family names and initials with a publication date the title is in italics and it is the third edition published by Oxford University Press. There is no DOI available for books in this collection, so the reference includes the full URL instead. Let's take a look at journal literature. This is a journal article with a DOI. There are two authors, a publication year and a journal article title. The title of the journal is Business and Professional Communication Quarterly and the volume number is also in italics. Include an issue number in round brackets and the article's page numbers. For sources with two authors, you should use both authors' surnames in each citation. If the citation is inside brackets, use an ampersand between the names. But if you are including the names of the authors in the text of your work, you should use and in between the names. Here is an example of a journal article without a DOI. This article is from Harvard Business Review and you may find some journal titles do not provide a DOI in the case of this one. Find the site button within the database or platform as this will provide you with a full web address to add to your reference. For an article with 21 or more authors, include the first 19 authors, names and initials, in certain ellipses but no ampersand and then add the final author's name. APA 7 has included more guidance about referencing and citing social media content such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. 
Include the name of the page, the content or caption of the post and just include the first 20 words as the title. Some content may include non-standard spelling, hashtags and emojis. Try not to alter anything and replicate the original post if possible. Individual social media posts are typically not subject to change, though they may be removed, so give the full date after the author's name. There is no need to specify a retrieval date for most social media content, but there are occasions when you may need to include a retrieve by date, for example when citing or referencing social media profiles, events listings and curated social media formats, such as Twitter moments which are subject to change, so use ND and add retrieved month, day, year before the URL. Let's take a look at some social media example references and citations. Here is a Twitter example, a post from the Hallam Library Twitter account. The title contains the first 20 words in italics and it is identified as a tweet in square brackets. Include a full URL and include the name of the platform, for example, Twitter. This example is a citation and reference from the National Trust's Facebook page with no date, so a very similar approach to referencing Twitter profiles. This example is a citation and reference from Hallam Library's Instagram. Remember to use square brackets to include specific information about the content, for example, picture, and add the date if available. The format is year, comma, month, and day with a full URL. For websites, if you cite multiple pages, include a separate reference for each one and include the fullest date possible for websites where available. If the website does not have a date, use ND, no date, and provide a retrieval date too. For websites, as I said earlier, put the full date if available. So you can see the example here, add the year in your in-text citation, but full date in your reference list. You only put the name of the website if it's not the same as the author. So for the example here, the content was created by the World Health Organization and the name of the website is the World Health Organization. They are the same, so don't duplicate. But this example here, the Civil Society Unit, I've written this piece that is part of the United Nations website. So therefore, add the United Nations in the reference and then the URL. While blogs can be produced by all sorts of people and organizations, they're often used as an informal but important means of academic communication. And so APA treats blogs more like magazines or other periodicals than other websites. It is assumed that the blog is archived and hence you don't need to include a retrieval date. Indeed, one of the ways you can identify if a website is a blog is whether it has a structured archive of previous posts. The example reference shows the author of the blog, Kaylee, with a date, title of the blog post, and the name of the blog is in italics, rather like a journal title reference. For reports, include the website or database name. If you're referencing from, say, Statista, a lot of the material on Statista is generated from elsewhere. So that means you need to include the corporate author, the group author, where the source is from, the date, the title, and then say it's from Statista and add the full URL. This example should be helpful for many databases where you may be referencing reports. So why do we need to reference? There are academic and ethical reasons on the one hand, and practical reasons on the other for referencing. You want to show the range and variety of sources you have used to demonstrate your command of the literature. You want to show that you have used relevant and key sources to support the ideas you have discussed. You want to help your tutor trace the sources you have used and help yourself retrace the sources you have used. Check Library Online to access the support with referencing and raise a query with Library Chat available 24-7. The referencing at Sheffield Hallam University Online Guide has been revised. Check the section I need to reference something in APA and take a look at the help available using RefWorks, the referencing management software. You can also book to attend a referencing or RefWorks workshop. Remember to click on the heading Develop Your Skill to find the updated online referencing guide. 
There are also two new guides and a new leaflet entitled A Quick Guide to Referencing available as downloadable PDFs. Your guide to APA 7 edition referencing and how to use APA covers the main principles of referencing and citing. So if you have questions about secondary referencing or citing multiple authors, take a look at this guide. The Guide to Referencing Sources and Examples is a comprehensive guide which provides examples of citations and references for many academic, online and audiovisual sources. The QR code will direct you to the online referencing at Sheffield Hallam University guide where you can locate these handy resources. So that's just a very brief update. There are some small changes with APA 7 and there will be plenty of help available. Just a reminder, the library is always happy to provide advice and support on referencing. That's something that we do all the time. But we can't check every single one of your references. You need to check them against the guidance provided, but we're very happy to help with queries and support. And finally, thank you for your time, and please see the contact details here. Hi all, thanks for watching, like, share, subscribe and comment and share with your friends and your uni mates. Bye!